Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about exposure blending. It's going to be an overview. I'm not going to cover luminosity masking. That's very specific and very difficult to implement, i.e. you can create the mask quite easily, but actually using them to edit images with is quite advanced. It's going to be my next video. I'm not saying if you're a beginner you won't understand it, but it's, it's a big jump. So I'm going to stick with the, the basics of exposure blending. Now I happen to be in Lightroom. I could be in Bridge, let's say, but Lightroom is my preferred way into Photoshop. I shoot in RAW. Now the basic premise is this. You take one scene and you shoot it with differing exposure values. The best way to do this is with exposure bracketing. So you're automating how you get these different exposures out of your camera. I shoot in aperture priority. I had my aperture tied down to F11. I had the ISO tied down to 100. So if you're shooting with three shots at 2EV apart, let's say, the only thing that can move between those three shots is the shutter speed. First image, the 0EV one, at F11 and ISO 100, which is not going to change between all three images. This is what the camera thinks is a balanced exposure using evaluative metering. The second one though, the minus two EV one, is 1 60th of a second compared to 1 15th. The final one, the two EV one, quarter of a second, a lot of lights getting in, but the ISO and aperture won't change. So that's my three images and that's my preferred way of doing it. Now I would say in hindsight, I probably didn't need to be two EV apart, probably one stop or one EV would have been fine. It is what it is. Now I tried a quick HDR, most of HDR in Lightroom. And if you like sci-fi movies, that's probably all right, but I don't like that at all. Now you don't have much control in Lightroom. You have more control over HDR in Photoshop and even more control in Photomatics Pro plugin for HDR. But you'd never get what I call a, a really nice image that you can get, let's say using luminosity masking. And that's the ultimate in exposure blending. So I prefer using exposure blending and I prefer using luminosity masking. But as I said, I'm not going to cover luminosity mask in this video. This is going to be a basic exposure blend of three images. G on my keyboard. So there's the three images. Now I would love to bring them in as smart objects into Photoshop. That would mean three separate documents. So I'd have to get the other two layers from the other two documents into one document. But the problem I've got is I shot this on a tripod on wet sand and there was movement between the three shots. Not very much, but enough. So I cannot use auto align layers with smart objects. So I'm going to have to bring them in as normal layers. Also, I could have, if I wanted to, I can do if I wanted to, I should say, is bring the zero EV one in as a smart object, then duplicate it twice or copy it twice. So we've got three smart objects and with the new smart object layers, double click to invoke Adobe Camera Raw and then change the exposure values. So I'm simulating, let's say shooting in my camera with three different exposure values because raw files contain so much data, you can do that. And a lot of professional people actually do that. But the normal route is exposure bracketing, three shots at two EV apart. HDR image here, as I said, I really don't like that. So I'm going to show you how you can do it very subtly, just using some very quick layer masking inside of Photoshop. Let's get the three images in. First image, shift click on the third one, photo, edit in, right to the bottom, open as layers in Photoshop. I've done that already and that gives you one document with three layers in it. I've got my zero EV layer on the top. I'm going to double click on it and put zero EV. Minus two one here, minus two EV. And two EV, you think it'd be plus two, but it isn't two EV there. As I said, if they were smart objects, I couldn't auto align them. I can. So shift and click onto the top one, three layers selected. It's under edit, but if you can't find things like auto align, just type in a line here under help and search, and there it is, auto align layers. 
Keep it on auto, go okay. Very processor intensive, all of this. Right, I've got my three layers. The horizon is dipping to the right. Crop tool, C on your keyboard. Not for me, actually, because I've assigned C to something else. So crop tool, straighten. Now, this could cause me problems because I've got so much held in memory. So sometimes when you click and drag, it doesn't work. But I've got it to work this time, so that doesn't look too bad. I'll leave it like that. Let go. Press return or hit the tick symbol. Let it catch up. There's my three images. I need the zero EV one on the bottom, like so. I've got more selected, that's my fault. Click and drag down to the bottom. The minus two one in the middle. Now, the basic premise of exposure blending is to use masks. We're going to use layer masks, but we're going to use hide all layer masks. Now, if you come up to layer, and go layer mask, you can use that and go hide all. Command and control Z or Z. Or press the Alter Option key and click on the layer mask icon. Hide the 2EV layer because it makes it easier for you. Then you have choices. You can paint with white, you can paint with grey, you can do all sorts of things. But I'm going to use the gradient tool. G on my keyboard, click on that and make sure you're on black to white, which I am. Okay. Don't change anything, just leave it as it is. Tick reverse and put dither on because it makes for a better gradient. Don't worry about transparency, it doesn't matter. Click and drag down to about two thirds of the way into the layer mask. Make sure you're on that layer mask as well. So you can see what I've done. I've made the sky darker. I've allowed the sky to show through. Alter option, click on the layer mask. You can see what the layer mask looks like. Back to the layer. And that's it with the dark sky showing through. I'm going to turn the 2EV one on. Same process, Alter Option key kept pressed. Click on the layer mask icon. I'm going to use the gradient tool again from the bottom. There's so many different ways you can do this blending, but I prefer this way on most of my landscape images. But for this type of image, I would be using luminosity masks. Drag from the bottom with the gradient tool up to about there. And that will allow for that brighter area to show through right down to the bottom layer. They could be crossing over slightly, but it isn't really that important. Now all the control I will do with a brush. Now it's very dark there. Now B for brush, if I right click, make sure it's on zero hardness. Also, if you alt right click on a Windows system and keep those two buttons pressed, you can change the hardness and the size on the fly. For me, it's Control Alt because I'm on a Mac, keep them pressed, or Control Option, I should say, Command Zero, Control Option, and then dragging to the right or left will make it smaller and larger. Dragging up and down will change the hardness. I want a very soft brush, probably easier to do it by right clicking, Command Zero, and let's get rid of that there, Command Zero to fit back on screen. I'm going to paint. White should be my foreground color, D on the keyboard. I've got my flow at 5%. That's the way I like to work. Because if you went in with 100% flow, shift and zero, what will happen is, if you're in that layer mask there, be careful you're in it, it will flatten the image off. It doesn't look right. So Command and Control Z or Z, shift and zero five will put me at 5% flow. Make sure you're on the layer mask. And I'm gonna paint quite quickly. I don't want to over brighten it at all. I just come in there a little bit probably a bit more around there, make that a bit lighter, and probably just a quick go over the stones there. No more than that. Ultra Option key, click on that layer mask, that's what I've got. Back to the layer. Now, if I command or control click on the layer mask, you can see it changed like that, I'm basically going to select that mask as a selection, make a selection out of it. Then I could come down to the adjustment layers here, click, and let's say pick Hue Saturation, and it's used that mask from that selection. Or I could have pressed Alter Option key, kept it pressed, dragged up, and replaced the mask. Yes. So now I should be only affecting the areas with this hue saturation that the mask can see. Um, it might pick that layer down below. So what I should do is clip it to the layer just below. So Alter Option key kept pressed, 
click down. That ensures that I'm only affecting that area below based on that mask. I cannot touch that layer at all or that, you know, any other layers because I've clipped it. If I didn't clip it, I would probably get away with it because of the layer mask. But if there's any areas that can be shared between all these three layers, I will be affecting it. Here's the hue and saturation panel. What I'm going to do now is probably actually use the tool here and drag across to the right and put the saturation up so you can see what I'm doing. So just warm that up a little bit and probably take the lightness down a little bit as well to give it some more punch. Then command and control click on that layer mask again. I've selected those marching ants there and then maybe put a curves layer on, which is down here. I could probably drag it down there, bring up the shadows a little bit, typical S curve, bring it round. I could even do the same for this layer here as if I wanted to. Command or control click and then put another curves layer on. By the way, I should have clipped that curves layer like so, ultra option key kept pressed. I have a choice here now. Um, no, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay with that one. Basically, yeah, I am going to stay like that. And what I'm going to do is click there. I'm not going to clip it. I'm going to see what happens basically. And bring those shadows up a little bit. So I've sort of brightened it up. Probably a bit too much. Yeah, no, bring that down. Bring that one up. Now, if I clip it to the layer below, let's see what happens. Not much change, actually. I'll take the clip off. So that's basic exposure blending. How you implement it is entirely up to you, but you're going to use masks. You could use masks inside the channels and load them up. Normally, layer masks is what you need and make sure they're hide all masks because it makes your life easier. This is three different exposure values. Some people only work with two. As I said, smart objects would be ideal because I'd then be able to double click on the smart object to invoke Adobe Camera Raw, and that would give me great flexibility. Don't forget, I've done no proper editing on those three images. This is just a bit of blending. If I look back at, let's say, HDR image generated by Lightroom, I think it's far better, to be totally honest with you. So that's just a basic edit. Now, if I group these together up to the top curves adjustment layer and go Command or Control G, that's the basic zero EV image, which my camera thought was all right. Done no editing on it. But with a bit of blending, I've got it to that. Not perfect, but far better than that. So that's it, guys. I would have done this image with luminosity masking, but it's far too complex to sort of put into one video when I'm talking about exposure blending generally. So that's the general idea of exposure blending. I'm now probably in my next video going to take those three images again, but use luminosity masks. And that makes things more interesting, much more dynamic. You can get better dynamic range out of your image, but it is far more complicated. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.